Hi, my name is John Dooley, and I am the entomologist for the United States Department of Agriculture, Plant Protection and Quarantine at San Francisco, California. My specialty is that I identify all of the white flies and armored scales that accompany shipments coming into the country from all over the world. Okay, and the last one is going to be Hemi Berlesia latanie. It's almost as wide as it is long. And then uh, L1 well developed and L2 and L3 lobes reduced to sclerotized points. You see one lobe, the other lobe is, is missing on this one. Um, this is the L1, it's really long. L2 is very, very short. And L3 is somewhere hidden in the, uh, around these plates over here. So look at yours and see if you can see any lobes at all. L2 and L3 will, will look most likely like little spines, a conical spine. L2 might have a notch on the uh, side of it, and may or may not. And then if you recall the three uh, clusters of ducts on the preprogidial um, margins on A and Idiella orientalis, you'll notice this may have some ducts, but they're not in clusters, and they're very small to see going up the pygidium. In fact, a lot of these, some of these are even seedy too. Oh, that, that won't work too well. It's about as high as I can get it. But there are no clusters, so you won't, you won't confuse this with ANADLA anyway. Because you can see all three uh, lobes on ANADLA pretty well. They're pretty well formed and they all look pretty much the same shape. But that and then uh, the, the, the uh, reduced L2 and L3. And then um, no prepagidial ducts in clusters. The anal pore diameter sub equal to or larger than the length. If you look at, the, if you take a measure by the so many units, let's say this had four units on your micrometer, and you measure this, this may be only measuring three units for the length of the, the anal lobe. So uh, the medium lobe. This uh, anal opening is always much larger than the length of the anal lobe. In other words, the anal lobe can fit right into the anal pore if you were to take it and make a picture of it and then try to drop it in. So it'll fit right into that. And that is very indicative of this genus Hemerbolesia. Most hemorrhagia have large, lo large pores like this, anal pores. There's a few that won't seem as obvious, and they're always very, very close to the anal, uh, to the L1 medium lobe. You notice here, if you take the diameter of this, and the distance between here at the base of the L1 lobes to where the uh, anal pore starts is almost the same distance, or maybe even a little less than the diameter of the anal pore. And that's indicative of this species. No, there's no other, as far as I know of, although science is weird sometimes, that I've seen that has an anal pore that big. It's huge. And most of the time I've seen it's like this, where it has these structures come along the side of it, or it's actually sitting right on top of the anal lobe, the medium lobes. So that's also very important structure on that. Um, Yeah, that's it for this. This is specific for Latanio Latin scale. For your information, uh, they did DNA studies on this. This is a, one of the species where it's both parthogenetic within the species, depending on the population. Some have no males, some reproduce without males, others do it with males and females. It's really weird. And uh, just for your information, we're not going into this. Oh, this is a vulva incidentally right up here. But a lot of these, almost all armor scales, white flies, psyllids, all of them have endosymbionts, and the endosymbionts are bacteria that are in the guts of these. And they did a lot of studies and found out that they too have a correlation to whether or not they're parthogenetic, whether or not they're resistant to pesticides, and whether or not they're good vectors of diseases too, if they carry diseases. No armor scale carries is a vector of a disease. White flies are, armored scales are not, partly because of their feeding habit, and even more important is the adult female 
is rudimentary, sessile, sticks to one place, feeds out of that one place, has no legs, or very rudimentary legs in two genera, and doesn't move anywhere, whereas a white flies and the psyllids, both the males and females, are winged legs and, and take off everywhere. That's one reason why they're good vectors of diseases. That's why these things don't vector any disease. And they don't harbor disease either, other than the endosymbionts, which are bacterial. Anyway, that is it. Thank you very much.